The Philadelphia 76ers will not be picking up Jaleel Okafor's team option on his fourth season, which means after this year he will be an unrestricted free agent. And it seems Jaleel wants either a buyout or a trade from Philadelphia. And I have to say, I think there are a few teams in the league who should at least give Okafor a shot. Because, I mean, what he can do well, which is a score inside, it's still something that can get you some buckets, and given that there are some teams who are just not that good, are not going to be good whether they sign Okafor or not, they are in need of some scoring, they don't have a lot of aspirations in terms of free agent markets because they're just not good or whatever, why not take a chance on a guy? I don't think Okafor is going to cost you that much money because his stock is pretty low. He has to get better on a lot of things, one of them being his jump shot because you got to be able to space the floor at least somewhat. If you're not going to be a shooter, then you better be really good when it comes to your handles or just something. I mean, Okafor really has to update his game for the modern day NBA. I mean, if this was 1987, then he'd be great, but unfortunately it's not. So developing some sort of an outside shot would be great. Defensively, he's just got to get better. I'm not acting like the team taking him on should just assume he's going to be good. No, there's a chance that it could not work out at all, which is why I'm saying don't throw that much money at him and don't offer too much. But if you're a bad team in a situation where you're going to be rebuilding for a while, why not just take a chance? One of them being the Chicago Bulls, because uh, the Bulls suck, and they're probably going to end up drafting Marvin Bagley after the season anyway, and then who knows what happens with Jaleel. But in terms of the team they have right now, I mean, besides Zach Levine and uh, Lowry Markkinen, not a whole lot of source on offense, and Levine's not even there right now, and who knows where he's going to be in terms of his level of play, given his, uh, his injury. So we're mainly going to focus on Lowry Markkinen, whose three-point shooting is insane at the moment, as he's attempting, like, seven three-pointers a game, and he's shooting very well from outside, spotting up, pick and pops. He's similar to Przingis in that his size combined with his jumper just makes him really a, a matchup nightmare. And you've always got to have a body on him, so that type of dude is valuable. And I think Markkanen, he and Okafor could actually have a not bad on-floor relationship offensively, because they could have sort of an outside-inside sort of deal where Okafor's around the rim, Markkanen's around the perimeter. Similar to like Mark Gasol and Zach Randolph, Clearly not as good, but you see what I'm getting at. But the question would be on defense, because Markkanen, people aren't exactly praising him for what he could eventually be as a defender. And if you have him and Okafor out there, well, Blake Griffin could get through both of them and just dunk on them. So you might have to stagger them. And I think a big question with Okafor is going to be, do you have a power forward who can play next to him to help him out? There is Cristiano Felicio. I don't know if he's the type of power forward who can really be effective as a perimeter defender. He's 6'9", and he's kind of more of like a natural center, if anything. But it's definitely not going to be Bobby Portis or Nikola Mirotic, given that situation. Or well, at least if I was the Bulls, Portis would not be on the team. But who knows. As far as who can play off of Markkanen, well, that's Robin Lopez. He can play defense. The idea of it would be, like, Lopez would play with Markkanen, and then Okafor would play with some other power forward. I just don't know if Felicia would be that guy, but I think it's still worth a try for the Bulls. Next up is the Phoenix Suns, a team who is also in the Michael Porter, Marvin Bagley, Luka Doncic, and whoever else uh, sweepstakes, Colin Sexton being another one because they're going to need a point guard here pretty soon. Devin Booker's good. They need more offense. The potential power forward next to Okafor could be Marquise Chris. That would be a defensive nightmare for Phoenix, not for the other team. It'd be a turnstile for the other team. Chris was pretty bad on defense his rookie season, and him and Okafor together, that just might be too much to ask for. Now, Josh Jackson, on the other hand, he could play some defense. And if you want to play him at the small ball four next to Jaleel Okafor, I think there is some uh, room for that working, because he seems like he could defend a few positions. But the question with him, of course, is the jump shot which he's actually shown some life as a shooter early on in the season, but we're going to assume the scouting reports have a thing or two right about his jumper being a question. Drajan Bender may end up being the best option there. He's actually getting some minutes for Phoenix this season, which I like, and some of the games I've watched, 
He's been doing some stuff on defense in terms of switching. The shooting can hopefully just be enough uh, because his three-point shot seems to be pretty legit. He had a big three-pointer against the Nets um, last night as well. He might be the perfect power forward next to Okafor. The question is, can he get to that level? We see the type of player he can be. Who knows? Next up, the Brooklyn Nets. Similar to the other two teams, they need offense. They just need sources of it. They've actually been one of the better offensive teams in the league, mainly through ball movement, three-point shooting, and D'Angelo Russell getting better. I mean, the dude, he's putting up a whole lot of points, and he's doing it decently efficiently, so I gotta give him credit. And then they just shoot a million three-pointers. There's guys like Joe Harris, who come in ready to knock down shots. There's Alan Crabb, who's constantly a floor spacer. And I think these guys actually have two potential small ball fours who could help out Okafor. First one being Damari Carroll. The three-point jumper, as well as his defense, have been better this season. He's looked way more active this year for Brooklyn. It seems like the health ailments that he had with the Raptors, they just seem to be gone. The other one's Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who could really be good on defense and as an athlete. Um, his offense is more of a question next to Okafor, but what are you going to do? And they do have a, another center on the roster who seems like he can be pretty okay on defense, and that's Jared Allen. So if Allen could end up being like your long-term starting center, which is a lot to ask for, and he's only a rookie, so who knows if he can actually get there. And then you have Okafor backing him up. That could be something that works. You know, you're playing Okafor next to Damari Carroll, Jared Allen starting. So it's an idea. I think Okafor being another source of offense for Brooklyn could be nice. Now, given how much they shoot threes and run pick and rolls, maybe his post-ups would bog down the offense. I trust Kenny Atkinson would be able to use him in a good way. But of course, Okafor has to get better. If he just remains the player he is now, then it doesn't matter who the hell picks him up. It's not going to work out. But if he can just make some improvements and find the right team, I think it could end up being good.